So when you first walk into the room of a patient with a possible shoulder dislocation, you may see the patient in a certain position based on what type of shoulder dislocation they may have. So if you see an anterior dislocation, the patient may be flexed at the elbow, abducted, and externally rotated. And then their shoulder and their arm may be squared off at a 90 degree angle if you are looking face on. And next, if you see a posterior dislocation, they will be internally rotated and adducted, so their arm will be close to their body. And this is most common when a patient has had a seizure or electrical shock. And then finally, the inferior dislocation, the patient will be sitting super abducted with their arm over their head and their hand is usually resting on their head to give their shoulder a little bit of a rest. When doing a physical exam on a patient with a possible shoulder dislocation, you need to do your normal musculoskeletal exam. So definitely test where they're tender to palpate and then test their range of motion, their sensation, and their strength. But there are a couple other things that you need to pay particular attention to. One of the first and most important things you need to do is check the sensation of the deltoid area of the affected shoulder. The axillary nerve supplies sensation to this area and it is one of the most common nerves that's injured in anterior or posterior dislocations of the shoulder. The second most important thing you need to check is to see if the patient is neurovascularly intact. So definitely check the sensation distally to the shoulder that's affected, make sure they can feel your hands, and then check the capillary refill. And also, make sure there is no wrist drop in the patient's hand. This is seen with radial nerve injuries, and radial nerve injuries are common with humeral shaft fractures that can be seen also with dislocations in the shoulder. And lastly, I like to do the Dugas test. So if this is the shoulder you're concerned about for a dislocation, tell the patient to take that shoulder and arm and try and touch the opposing shoulder. And if they are unable to do so, this is a positive Dugas test, and it is very concerning for a dislocation of that shoulder. The best imaging to simply determine if there is a dislocation of that shoulder is a simple x-ray, and the views you'll want to get are an AP, lateral, and axillary. And then to determine if it's an anterior or posterior dislocation, get a scapular Y view. This is the Y view x-ray of the right shoulder. The Y in the name Y view comes from the Y shape that the lateral view of the scapula makes at this angle. From the coracoid process down to the glenoid labrum and back up to the chromium process. When you are anteriorly dislocated, the humeral head will overlie the ribs, medial to the Y, instead of sitting on top of the glenoid labrum here. When you are posteriorly dislocated, the humeral head will have moved away from the ribs, lateral to the Y. As you can see here, the humeral head, labeled with the blue arrow, has moved from its original position of overlying the glenoid labrum, which is labeled with the red arrow. So since we are moving toward the ribs, this is an anterior dislocation. This next picture shows the anterior posterior view of the left shoulder. The two pictures show the before and after x-rays from reducing a posterior shoulder dislocation. The picture on the left is the posterior dislocated shoulder and is actually representing the light bulb sign very well. The light bulb sign refers to an abnormal AP radiograph appearance of the humeral head in a posterior shoulder dislocation. When there is a posterior dislocation, the humerus internally rotates such that the head contour projects like a light bulb when viewed from the front. This next picture shows two very common lesions that will be seen with anterior and posterior shoulder dislocations. During the abrupt displacement of the humerus, the cartilage covering the humeral head tends to hit the glenoid labrum. This leads to the formation of a depression in the humeral head generating the so-called hill sacs lesion. The Bankart lesion is a byproduct of the humeral head hitting the glenoid labral complex, causing an injury to the anterior inferior aspect of the glenoid labrum. This is another picture of the Hill Sachs lesion. Again, it is merely a depression in the head of the humerus. What type of dislocation is this? You need a hint? 
This is a Y view of the right shoulder. Great! This is an anterior shoulder dislocation. You can tell this is anterior because the humeral head is overlying the ribs, medial to the Y, instead of sitting on top of the glenoid labrum. What type of dislocation is this? This is the AP view of the left shoulder. Great! This is a posterior dislocation. You can tell because the light bulb sign is seen here, showing the internal rotation that occurs with posterior dislocations. What abnormality is seen here? Great! You can see the Bancart lesion of the glenoid labrum. This picture was taken after the dislocation was reduced. What abnormality is seen here? Did I trick you? This is the normal Y view of the left shoulder. You can tell because the humeral head overlies the glenoid labrum sitting right in the middle of the Y formed by the acromion and the coracoid process. What dislocation is seen here? Great! This is a Y view of the posterior dislocation of the right shoulder. You can tell because the humeral head is lateral to the glenoid labrum and the Y formation made by the scapula. Thank you.